Hey, this is Altbrax. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how I create snares for my more minimal stuff, uh, like minimal drum and bass. Um, so there's kind of a cool trick that I do in this that I didn't, I've never used before. I kind of do things differently uh, every time. Uh, not everything, but some things. Uh, so I'm going to start with addictive drums, but first I'm going to show you what sound we're making and what it sounds like in context uh, then you can decide if I'm wasting your time or not within the first minute of this video so here's the snare on its own it kind of sounds like it's underwater um, and then here's how it sounds in the context of a track uh, so this is actually an unreleased tune so I'm only going to show you 16 bars uh, and this section happens to be uh, my favorite section so let's hear how it sounds <laughs> So I don't remember what uh, kit I used specifically for that snare, so this isn't going to sound exactly the same, but it'll be um, just kind of a similar sound, which is what makes this so nice, is you can get a variety of sounds out of it. Um, but I'm going to start with a synthesized snare for this. You want to use something that's uh, pretty short, but you can use an acoustic snare too. Uh, it works well. I'll just kind of change the character of it, but this is what the initial sound sounds like. Um, one second. <clears throat> so that's it. Um, there's no processing on that uh, outside of what's what gets done for the various kit presets and addictive drums. And then we're going to resample that. Um, so I just kind of threw these here just so you can see what the overall processing chain is. Um, they're just turned off for now. So we'll start with a compressor. Uh, just to make it a bit more attacky. I just used the glue compressor for this. But you can use whatever you want. Uh, and this is kind of the fun part that I've never used on these kind of snares before. Um, but it lets you get a really wide range of sounds out of one sample. And I just happen to be going through some of the packs uh, that come with Ableton Live Suite, just stuff I haven't bothered to look at before. Uh, and under the glitch and wash uh, section, there is an effects rack called Rough Diamond. Uh, I don't know what's in here, I haven't really expanded it, but based on the macro names, I'm assuming there's probably a corpus and ring modulator, reverb, and some kind of delay, probably the, the grain delay uh, plugin. Uh, so by default, it's gonna sound kind of weird. Um, but I just kind of tweak these macros until I find something that sounds good. You don't need to worry about the tail because we're going to uh, add a fade after when we resample it again. Uh, so I'm just going to mess with these. That does not sound good.
I don't know what spectral gaps does either, but it changes the character of the sound, so. About halfway, it starts to sound kind of more like a normal snare again. So I'm just gonna go with this. I'll resample it again. Sorry, I was getting stuff set up earlier and I had duplicates of these plugins. Uh, so the, the effects rack on this, I use a vocoder, another compressor, uh, and then a transient shaper. You don't really need the transient shaper though because you can just use a fade, which I also did, but for some reason I decided to do it both ways. So first we're just going to add a fade to this and shorten it up. Not that much. Yeah, just something like that. Just short and snappy. Uh, I use Fab Filter Pro C2 for this, uh, but you can use whatever compressor you want. I like to switch things up. And we can probably gain it up a bit. Uh, and then the most important part of this processing chain is actually probably the vocoder. It kind of gives it like a underwater sound. Uh, it makes it sound kind of crunchy. I think I actually put that before the compressor in the other chain, so let's do that. And then I don't really mess with much in here, uh, at least not for this. I'm just gonna tweak the release and the attack. So obviously you probably don't want a really long release. Um, so I just kind of tweak it until it sounds good and then pull down the dry wet until it sounds good. Uh, whatever numbers work for your snare. I really like the crunch that it adds, so I usually go above 50%. And I'm just gonna add transient shaper anyways. Uh, you can also just adjust the envelope. But this gives you more curves, although I don't even bother changing them, so I guess it doesn't really matter. See how this compares to the original snare. Similar, it's not as bright, but it could still work. Um, I'm gonna see how it sounds if we just put it into context of the song. And we can probably gain it up a bit more. And then you can probably EQ this too. There's probably a bunch of low end stuff that you don't want. I don't think I EQ'd the other one because I like them dirty. 
That was a joke. And then you always go back and tweak things. Cool, that's a bit better. Uh, so here's that sounds with the original snare again. And then with our new snare. Still works. I don't like it as much as the other snare I made, but that's okay. Uh, there's a couple more that I made earlier today. We can see how those sound. I was actually using the same uh, sample uh, from Addictive Drums. So uh, you can see how different these can sound just from uh, different settings with the processing. It's because I use this other chain. that I got rid of the snare we just made. But anyways, you know how it sounds. So if you like that, uh, leave a comment and maybe I'll make more of these videos. See ya.